All right, this video is a video that's going to cover a really brief kind of discussion about sampling distributions for means. All right, so let's quickly talk about what a sampling distribution is, especially when you're talking about a sample's means. Basically, we're talking about what will all possible samples of size n look like. So we have to understand that we need two values. The first value we need is the mean of the population, and then we call that mu. We've seen that symbol before. And the standard deviation of the population, we call that sigma. We've seen those symbols before. So we have to understand that basically what's happening here is that let's talk about the average weight of a high school boy. We know that somewhere out there is the true average weight of a high school boy, and that would be mu. Now, if we take a sample of, let's just say, 15 high school boys, we might not necessarily get that exact same mean. We might get something a little bit higher, a little bit lower, and that's the idea of creating a sampling distribution. A sampling distribution will simply show what all possible samples of size 15 would look like. Okay, So just like with sampling, dis uh, sampling distributions for proportions, we have our five steps that we need to follow to make sure that we understand exactly what a sampling distribution for means looks like. First, you've got to make sure you state what your sampling distribution is for. So you'd say something like, this is the sampling distribution for the mean, um, for the mean weight of high school boys. Something very simple like that. But don't forget you have to add in there for a sample of size, whatever your particular sample size is, because we know that sample size does change things, which we'll talk about later. Next, we need to check our conditions. <clears throat> now, just like with proportions, we do have three very simple conditions. And most of them, in fact, all of them, will sound very familiar. But there's one little hiccup we'll talk about. First, the sample must be random to avoid bias. Pretty common sense there. Second, the sample n is less than 10% of the population. You know, that's a pretty important thing in order for us to calculate standard deviation because if you're not less than 10% of the population, then independence could be violated and standard deviation gets tricky when that's a problem. So we've got to make sure our sample size is less than 10% of the population. And the third condition is the same one we've been hearing, and that's that the sample needs to be big enough. However, that conditions, to verify that conditions, there's a couple different things we have to check. First, when we were working with proportions, you may remember the 10 successes and 10 failures condition. Well, that is with proportions, because when you have proportions, you have successes and you have failures. You have people with blue eyes and people that don't have blue eyes, people that are left-handed and people that aren't left-handed. When you're working with means, there's no such thing as a success for a failure. So the first thing is, we kind of have two ideas here. The first idea is if the population is known to be normal. So if the problem tells you that the population, right, the entire population of whatever you're talking about is already normal, then to be honest, your sample size could be anything. Um, N can be any value. So you could even have a sample that's as small as 5 or 6 or, or 10. It really doesn't matter as long as you know the population is normal. So I guess the second issue is what if the population is non-normal? So the population is non-normal. Now when I say non-normal, I mean two things. You either don't know anything about the population, or it's specifically said that it's skewed left or skewed right, which is clearly non-normal. In this case, the sample size n must be greater than or equal to 30. Now, there's actually an important theorem that tells us to us. We'll talk more about this in class, but it's a theorem called the CLT, the Central Limit Theorem. And the central limit theorem says, even if you have a non-normal population, let's say your population is skewed to the right or skewed to the left, even if you have one of these non-normal populations, a sampling distribution will always be normal provided that your sample size is greater than 30 or equal to 30. So that's the importance of the central limit theorem. So basically, you know, we're trying to get a big enough sample to use the normal model. If your population is already normal, it doesn't matter what your sample size is. If, you're, if your population is not normal, as long as you're bigger than 30 or equal to 30, central limit theorem says it doesn't matter. Sampling distribution will still be normal. Okay, what is the center of the model? Well, this is saying, what do we expect? our center of our sampling distribution to be. Well, we expect it to be the truth. Now, a lot of kids look at this and they're like, wait a minute, those two symbols are the same. Well, this over here, the mu on the right-hand side, this is the population standard, D, or this is the population mean, right? So basically what we're trying to say is whatever the true value is for the mean, for the population, we would expect that for any of our samples. Over here, this is the mean for the sampling distribution of a mean. This is basically saying, what do we expect our 
our mean to look like? Well, we expect our sample mean x bar to look like the population. But of course, we understand that it might not, but we certainly expect it to. So make sure you understand that a mu all by itself is the population mean, and mu with the little x bar is the mean of our sampling distribution for means, okay? All right, what is the standard deviation? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Well, you take sigma and little x bar here. Now, once again, this is the standard deviation, not of the population. Sigma itself, sigma all by itself, that's the standard deviation of the population. This is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, right, for your sample mean x bar. And the formula for that is sigma divided by the square root of n. Okay, so you take the standard deviation of the population sigma divided by the square root of n. And this also allows us to understand that a bigger sample varies less. So as n gets bigger, the standard deviation for a sampling distribution will get smaller. So once again, you have to really understand that I'm using mu and sigma like twice, but you've got to make sure that that little x bar matters. That little x bar is making sure that you understand that this is the mean for the sampling distribution, not the population but we expect it to be the same. This is the standard deviation for the sampling distribution, not the population, okay? Next, you would draw a model. Everybody knows how to draw a model. We would put right smack dab in the middle, the, uh, the mean of our sampling distribution, and then we'd go up one, two, three, down one, two, three standard deviations. All right, that's pretty much it for our five steps. Hopefully that makes sense. The only major change is that a big enough condition, and of course the formulas change a little bit because we're talking about means. Now, here's the only example I want to look at today, and then it'll be a pretty short video. The height of young females follows a normal model with a mean of 64.5 inches. Notice that I use mu there. That's because this is a population mean right here, and a standard deviation deviation of 2.5 inches. Again, this is a population standard deviation. First question is actually an easy one that we've done a lot in the past. You might just not remember. Find the probability that a female, a single female, one female. Find the probability that one female is taller than 66.5 inches. This is easy. We're just talking about one female out of the population. We're not talking about a sample. We're just talking about one. So all you got to do is find a z-score for this girl. If she's 66.5, I'm going to subtract the true mean, 64.5, and I'm going to divide by my standard deviation, because I'm just talking about one girl here. This is pretty easy. 66.5 minus 64.5 is 2, divided by 2.5 is a z-score of 0.8. So this girl is a little bit taller, but not that much taller, a little bit taller than normal. To find the probability that this um, individual girl is greater than 66.5 inches, I'm going to go ahead and grab normal CDF on my calculator and look from 0.8 to 99, and I get 0 0.2119. 0 0.2119. So there's about a 21% chance that a female is 66.5 inches or taller. Very large likely, right? A single female could vary a lot. There's lots of tall girls in this world, and there's lots of short girls in this world. So a single girl will not vary a whole lot. But now we want to turn our attention to talking about a sample. Now find the probability that a mean height of a sample of 10 females exceeds 66.5 inches. And this is where things get interesting, because we're no longer talking about one female, we're talking about 10 females. Okay, so first off, what do we expect a sample of 10 females to be? Well, we expect their average to be 66.5. I mean, come on. If that's what's true for, I'm sorry, not 66.5, it was the 64.5 that was true for the population. Apologize. So once again, if we know that the average girl is 64.5 inches tall, we would expect our sample of 10 to be the same. However, what will make a major change is the standard deviation of our sample, because a larger sample should be should vary less. One female could vary a whole lot, but a group of 10 females should not vary, because in the long run, 10 females should average out, right? Now, 10 is not a huge amount, but it should certainly vary less than one. So what we do is we take the standard deviation of the population 2.5, and we divide by the square root of 10. So 2.5 divided by the square root of 10. And I get 0 0.7906. Now, once again, I should be checking my conditions real quick. Condition number one, it does need to be a random sample. It did say an SRS. That means a random sample. 
Condition number two, 10 females is certainly less than 10% of the population. That checks off. And three, now 10 is not bigger than 30. However, it did say that the population falls a normal model. So since the population falls normal model, a small sample size of 10 is still big enough. So just going through those conditions real quick there. Now, how do I find the probability that my sample is of my sample of 10 girls is 64, um, 66 point inches or taller. Well, all I got to do is find a z-score. So I'm going to take 66.5 minus 64.5. Now, this is just what I did below on the previous problem. However, the standard deviation is different because now I'm talking about a group of 10 girls. And a group of 10 girls on average should be closer to the truth, hence the smaller standard deviation. Because in a group of 10 girls, yeah, you might get one tall one, but you should have nine others that average it back to what is expected. And again, 64.5 is expected. So on the bottom is going to go our standard deviation for a group of 10, 0 0.7906. So I get 66.5 minus 64.5 is once again 2, divided by 0 0.7906 and I get a z-score of 2.5297. I'm already recognizing that that is an extremely, or not extremely, but that is a very unusually high z-score. Now, to find the probability that my sample mean of 10 girls, sometimes they put a little 10 right here, so you say a mean of 10 girls, you see that actual 10 there, is greater than 66.5. Well, to do that, I'm going to grab normal CDF on my calculator. I'm going to go from a z-score of 2.5297 to 99, and I get a very low probability of 0 0.0057. So let's compare these two answers to really understand what's happening here. One girl is not weird if she's a little bit tall. In fact, a girl for a girl to be over 66.5 inches, it happens 21% of the time. There are tall, tall, certainly tall girls out there. It's not that weird. However, when you talk about the average of 10 girls, now all of a sudden, if you have 10 girls chosen randomly and they all have an average of 66.5 inches, that would definitely be weird, right? That would have extremely low probability. In fact, I would not expect something like that to happen. So it's a simple explanation, a very nice visual way of seeing that a sample of one, just one single girl, is totally normal for one girl to be really short or really tall. It happens all the time. Walk around the high school, you could see that. But if you were to grab 10 random females, you should get an average much closer to the truth of 64.5, which is why 10 girls having an average of 66.5 inches or taller is going to be pretty unusual. All right, so hopefully you understand this idea of sampling distributions for means. It's all about samples, right? Samples of size whatever. In this case, it was a sample of size 10. And the key idea you need to leave with is understand that bigger samples will always vary less. Because in the long run, bigger samples, right? That's what we mean by the long run. In the long run, you should average out and be closer to that true value. All right, we'll do a lot more problems in class.